Hello, this is Wally Wood with the Revelation File Report. This is our 50th report on this network from the beginning, and this is a very transitional point for us, as you have seen over the past several programs as we entered into the year 2020. We've been focusing not only on this new year and what we've shown you in 2019 going forward and the shape of a new world system that is fast coming and nearly at hand, but uh, we've also been addressing this thought that 2020 itself is a decade that is highly, highly significant prophetically. And with this 50th program, we're making a transition from our old format into a new format. As I said a few shows ago, that I've long felt that the work of a prophet is twofold, to prophesy and prepare. And though I've never claimed the title or the office of a prophet, I do claim the work of a prophet. Uh, the Lord has had me in the news media all my life, and I've had a biblical worldview my entire professional career, especially a prophetic biblical worldview. And so we're moving now into a new era of programming that uh, will be more in the area of preparation, teaching, instruction, not so much in the area of information, but we will from time to time share late-breaking information as it comes available to us. But uh, predominantly, going forward with these programs, it will be a teaching format. The set will change, and um, there won't be as much in the area of multimedia, PowerPoint presentations, or anything of this nature. It's just going to be me teaching the Word, pertinent to the times we're living in. My prayer is that the vast majority, a growing majority of the body of Christ will tune into this, these programs and learn what is expected of us in this time frame from our Lord who is coming back in the lifetime of this one generation. And I'm convinced of it. I'm not setting dates. I'm not giving a day or a time. But we do know the generation because that last generation would be set apart from all others by way of the prophetic signs that would appear <clears throat> in the course of that generation. And as you've heard me say many times before, quoting Jesus in Matthew 24, that the generation that sees these signs would not pass away until everything had been fulfilled, which included his return. I've stood before audiences all across the country, and <clears throat> I've made note of the fact, as I would say to them, just to give you some idea of the dynamics of this particular generation. I'm standing before an audience made up of senior, senior citizens, 70s, 80s, 90s. In your lifetime alone, in just one lifetime, you've seen man go from the transportation system of Rome to landing a man on the moon in one lifetime. You've seen the communication system that existed back in the 13th century, 15th, 16th centuries, the bouncing lasers off the stars, measuring the planets, things of this nature, in one lifetime. And it would be the children of that generation that would live to see the rest of the fulfillment of end-time Bible prophecy, including the splitting of that eastern sky. So, there are some elements in Scripture that address the body of Christ in the last days like <clears throat> none other. There, this would be a dynamic, a different kind of generation, a more mature body of Christ, a more powerful body of Christ like never before because the days of darkness will be at hand. As the Scripture says that where evil abounds, grace will even more abound. And with that abounding grace comes the power of that grace and the power of the kingdom in that grace. So we're going to be spending a great deal of time going forward into the unfolding of these mysteries. And um, hopefully, you will, we all will mature 
into becoming the kind of ambassadors that God expects us to be as the hours wane, the prophetic hours wane toward the splitting of that eastern sky. So, today's program is a transitional program. The Revelation File Report, number 50, Transition 2020. In recent days, we've talked about how this decade that we're in now is the decade of darkness, the decade of decision, and the decade of declaration. The decade of darkness, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, that the last days would become perilous times. That's more than just hard times, threatening times, perilous times. And he gives a list of the kind of generation that last generation would be in the world of darkness. A decade of darkness. Jesus said the earthquakes, the famines, the volcanoes, the signs in the skies, the signs on the earth would just be the beginning of sorrows. This is a decade of darkness which will be increasing as we move into the 2020s. Um, this is not a time for the church to be in fear. Jesus noted that as well, that when you see these things coming, know that they must happen before he comes back. Do not be dismayed. Do not be afraid. But be on the alert. Be stable. Not somber, but sober. Be solid. This is the kind of, of people who are fully mature. And when they see the advancing evil and the advancing darkness, it'll be a, a decade of decision. World powers, world leaders are fast coming to the point of deciding who will lead them into a world of salvation. Who's going to save us from ourselves? World leaders today are not creating the solutions to solve the problems that keep rising up. And we've already cited a number of the surveys in the Revelation file on world leaders, their comments, their expectations, their hopes, their fears. And They've only got one place left to turn. And in our previous program, we showed how they're looking for a strong man, a man of solidarity, the likes of which the world has never seen before. When we took you through the Antichrist series a few programs ago, we mentioned seven. There's probably eight now uh, men who are on the world scene in various different areas of either public service or uh, national leadership or in the shadows. And each and every one of these men have shown themselves to be strong men in the area of their expertise and their performance. The world is looking for a strong man. And this is a decade of decision. That decision will be made this decade. Who will lead the world? Time Magazine, 1977, I keep going back to that. A guest editorial commenting at that time on the worsening, deteriorating, deteriorating uh, atmosphere of the world. And their conclusion was that they felt that the United Nations should uh, open a new political office, that being the president of the planet Earth. And ever since then, We've been moving in that direction. The much prophesied Antichrist. A decade of decision. This decade of declaration addresses the body of Christ. And in our next program, we're going to take a, a deeper look at this comment that's made in Daniel chapter 11 that in the midst of this world covering darkness, at the, in the administration of this world 
leader. He will overcome the saints. He will wear them down, the scripture says in Daniel 11. And in the midst of all that, those who know their God will rise up and do great exploits. My question, what exploits? What kind of exploits are we looking at? And I plan on taking you into that question in the next program after this one. What kind of people? Well, even the Apostle Peter asked that question in his epistle. What kind of people ought we to be that will go forth and do great exploits in the presence of such evil? We, we can't uh, ignore this. This is our allotment. This is our assignment, <clears throat> being the Christ ambassadors on this earth until the day of the rapture. So, decade of darkness, decade of decision, decade of declaration. The body of Christ has the authority to speak with power and make things happen. And that's not me on some... Uh, power surge of any kind, uh, power ego, no. We have a responsibility. Being the body of Christ, we speak the words of Christ, bearing the authority of Christ, because our warfare is not carnal. We're fighting against principalities and spirits of the unseen world, and our weapons are not carnal. They are spiritual. So this is preparing us for the day that's coming and our place in it and heaven's expectation of us in that time. What I thought I'd do real quick is to give you one piece of background into where I'm coming from and how it is that the Lord took a grocery clerk because that's really all that I'm good for, <laughs> is being a grocery clerk. I've been in the grocery business since I was 12 years old, I'm in my 70s now. But I've been in and out of it for better than 55 years. And when I'm not behind a cash register, I'm behind a microphone, sometimes in front of a camera, ministering, giving news, as you've seen me in, in this program doing. The Revelation file got started in 1981 when I went to work for Jimmy Swaggart and his network of stations across the country, his station here in the Houston area. And when I joined forces with this particular station, uh, Jimmy at that time had, I think, about six to eight uh, radio stations across the country. And I had a vision a dream, and that was to start a Christian news network, a network of uh, journalists who were professional as reporters, but who happened to be Christian with a strong Christian worldview. And so I called it the Christian News Network. The Revelation file started out as a daily commentary at the end of each day's newscasts that I would give on this particular radio station. And then it evolved into the Christian News Network from 1980 to 1990. And we had correspondence at these stations across the country and other stations that were outside the Swaggart Network participating as commentators of world news from a biblical perspective on our network. That was our logo. On my advisory board was one Marlon Maddox. Some of you who are familiar with uh, here in the Houston area may remember him in the early days of, of our contemporary Christian radio station, KSBJ, here in Houston. Marlon was considered to be an American pioneer in, bar in broadcasting. Aside from being the host of his national daily call-in program called The Point of View, he was also the founder and president of the USA Radio Network, which exists to this day, and the National Center for Freedom and Renewal, formerly known as the International Christian Media, also of Alliance Defense Fund, co-founder, as well as a noted journalist and author. Marlin was one of the two premier professional advisors 
that led their, uh, became my mentors, if you will, in building this idea, this vision of a Christian news network. Uh, he passed away in 2004. I was on his program in 1981-82. It was a daily two-hour live radio call-in program, one of the first of its kind in the country. So that was Marlon Maddox. He was one of my mentors. The other one was George Otis, who passed away in 2007, former CEO and chairman of Learjet Incorporated. In 1973, he founded the High Adventure Ministries. And in 1979, he founded the Voice of Hope Radio in Lebanon. You see here on the screen him sitting down with uh, Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel at that time, and also with President Reagan, praying with him at his ranch in California. George was known as uh, the uh, evangelist to the stars. Many Hollywood uh, celebrities were baptized in his backyard swimming pool. And uh, most of them received the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he was my other mentor. He and Marlon made up my advisory board because they saw the vision and they supported this concept of professional journalists reporting world news from a biblical perspective. And I so appreciated their, the time that they gave to this young reporter and this, this new vision that I had. And uh, we, we grew on these network stations uh, at the time. Uh, life took me in a different direction. It took them in a different direction. And so we walked away from it in uh, 2004, or I'm sorry, in, in 1990. And um, it lay dormant for a number of years. Then it was picked up by someone else. And now, today, the Christian News Network thrives on the Internet as christiannews.net. And it's one of my uh, strongest resources for daily news from a biblical perspective. I'm, I'm inviting everyone to go to this website, bookmark it. Go to it on a regular basis because you will find a very unique approach to what's happening in the world today with an understanding of biblical principles and end time prophecy just as part of my original vision for this network. Uh, I'm no longer a part of it, but I'm awfully very, very, very thankful and humbled that the Lord would use me to pioneer it on radio. And it, was, it has now gone worldwide on the Internet. So that's christiannews.net, one of my favorite news resources in the continuance of the Revelation File reports. The Revelation File has also expanded, and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Here you see a picture of me unfolding the New World flag about a couple of years ago at uh, the Encourager Church in one of our quarterly Revelation File uh, news forums that we hold at Encourager. And this was the very first time that this flag had been unfolded publicly. And while we were doing this, I was reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the Constitution of Earth. If you are now a veteran of our program, then you've seen us, uh, see me refer to and point you in the direction of the New World Constitution. If you go to our website, therevelationfile.com, you'll find a tab, One World Index. You click on that tab, and I've got links to the World Parliament, the World Constitution, the world flag, the world, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the New World Money. And all these you can go directly to on our website. So the Revelation file has expanded, and it's going out worldwide by this network and other means as well. Uh, I've placed these QR codes, so that when you go back and review this show again, you can put it on pause and use your camera to click on these QR codes, and they take, take you directly to the Facebook page, the Twitter page, and the LinkedIn page for the Revelation file. I invite you to like and subscribe across our broad network for the Revelation file. But I also have five websites, what we're calling the Wood News Group. 
It's interesting because it was back in the early 80s that the Lord told me that he was going to give me a network and that it would spread worldwide and would cost virtually nothing to operate. Well, that was before the Internet went public. And now, through the Internet, we've developed these five websites. And again, we have QR codes for each of these sites that you can uh, click on. And um, the, the Wallywood Ministries, digenomicscentral.com, wallywoodtechnews.com, otherwise known as Technology in the News. That particular site began when I owned and operated the National Space and Technology Association here in Houston from 2003 to 2013. And again, through that, we were able to bring out the advancing world technology and show how we are becoming a rapidly transparent world. As is shown in the logo beneath that, our transparentworld.com. Now, the technology in the news is a collection mostly of videos. Our transparentworld.com, multiple pages of links back to advancing technology that the Antichrist is going to need to prove himself and show himself to be God in the world. You'll need advancing technology to prove it. And so we take you there. And then the revelationfile.com. So these are the, the Wood News Group uh, network that the Lord has allowed us to create and to build. And so I invite you to make this a part of your bookmark page and um, refer to them often because I'm always placing new items on these websites, again, with a worldview of this being the end days of which Jesus and the prophets prophesied. So, when we come back with our new set of programs, we're going to begin a series of teaching, and I want to reiterate the fact that in Daniel 11, the prophet, the prophet said that it was describing the Antichrist coming forth with smooth words, that he would wear down the saints. That means psychologically, emotionally, uh, theologically, in every kind of way. He will wear them down. Revelation 13 says that he will make war against the saints and overcome them. And yet in the midst of this, in this particular verse, in, in verse 32 of Daniel 11, but the people who know their God will rise up and do great exploits. We have yet to touch the fullness of who we are. One of the things that we'll also be going into and looking at is who we are in Christ. I did a study of that some years ago and put together a paper of a collection of descriptions, biblical descriptions of who we are in Christ. You know how many descriptions I found in Scripture on this? 130 definitive descriptions. When God looks at us, this is how he sees us. 130 descriptions of who we are in Christ with Bible verses attached. If you're interested, write to me. Go to wallywoodministries.com, fill in the form, asking for the paper, who we are in Christ. And I'll send it to you if you'll give me your email address. Because it, and there's no commentary. It's listing after listing after listing, chronological and alphabetical. 130 describers. Now, do you feel that fully invested in your identity in Christ? Over here in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, if I recall correctly, is something that, again, people don't focus on when it comes to their 
our confidence in Christ. Catch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting with verse 5. In everything you have been made rich in him, in all speech and all knowledge. We fail to realize that when Christ came into us, he being the fullness of the Godhead bodily, when he comes into us, he is no less God in me than he is on the throne right now. And if he is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form, he comes into me in the same manner as the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know, we sing songs that say, fill me up, Lord, fill me up. This scripture says, you're already filled. In all speech and all knowledge, you've been made rich in him. Verse 7, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are not lacking in any gift. Whoa. Fill me up, Lord? No, that's not the prayer we should be praying. Whatever percentage of me he's got, I've got the fullness of him in it. So how much of me does he have? 10%? 50% on a good day? Whatever percent of me he's got, I've got the fullness of him in that. And I'm not lacking in any gift. That right there captures your attention and causes you to wonder, where am I lacking, where am I failing in performing fully as I ought to, being the fullness of him in my body? That's what Paul said, I'm dead in Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not I that live, but Christ living in me. And the life that I'm living in the flesh, I'm living by the faith of of Christ that indwells me. It's not my faith, it's his faith. We'll speak more on these things. We'll go deeper, because I think that we need to hear it. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Wally Wood, preparing you for our transition into a new era of programs with The Revelation File. You've been watching The Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forums in your city called The Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.